Welcome everyone to the Cosmos SDK community call. So on the agenda, um, just to repeat myself, there's we, I want to give a team update where we are with uh, Twilight 047, um, a point brought up by uh, informal gRPC simulate uh, should lock during recheck TX. Then uh, DYDX asked if there's a possibility of introducing a way to execute logic during the commit phase. And uh, finally, Robert would like to talk about proposal cancellation. Um, should funds be burned, sent to the community fund, or re re uh, returned to the person who deposited for the proposal? So to quickly start with team updates. Uh, Sorry. One, uh, yes. One thing. Um, uh, again, my request for like filling the notes. Uh, I can do it now, but I don't want to do it like every time. <laughs> Certainly, that. No, sometimes I'm not not here. Yeah. Unless okay. anyone else wants to do the notes. Um, well, I'll try and figure it out for the next call. Um, but this time I'll I'll try and um, do it as I um, talk about various items. Um, uh, okay, and like in that case, then I can help you. I mean, feel free like. I mean, if you are talking and then writing, I think it's complicated. So I can do it, but, but like anyone else, feel free to like you know improve and add whatever is needed. Yeah. Thanks. Um, thank you, Robert. So um, for team updates, uh, right now we so this past week uh, we've been fixing some bugs with um, with groups, uh, fixing group bugs, and right now we are starting the internal audit of. 047. So um, everyone on the team has picked up a section of the code base that has been modified and is starting to uh, audit those sections. So how we're breaking it apart is uh, we are trying to get two people to audit the section and then compare notes and potentially hop on a call at the end of um, at the end of the audit phase. And so during that time, we already have a small test net up. Um, that the team will be able to uh, test against. Um, and then, uh, so there we've also, uh, Julian and myself, updated the IBC Go repo. Um, so that's already updated and we already talked to the IBC team. Um, we are also preparing the uh, ICS23 repo and we have been coordinating with Alex from um, the Cosmosm team um, and uh, potentially even we'll have a test net with all those three items up um, in the near future. Um, a alpha tag um, should be out today, um, and then ideally an RC tag out uh, once we complete the audit and do some final testing. Um, any questions on those items as well? Yes, actually, uh, just wanted to uh, confirm that the 0 0.46 branch is still reasonably stable and and uh, available for full use. Yes, uh, we're still going to be backporting any security fixes, any bug fixes to 0.46. Um, so we will uh, we're treating it as the same. Usually, we uh, do two uh, backwards versions um, as maintained. Um, but in this scenario, and I think going forward, we might have to expand that to multiple versions. So um, most of the ecosystem is on 045, and we've been backporting um, uh, we've been backporting fixes to uh, bugs and various small features to 045. And as part of the uh, Dragonberry fix, we also introduced a 044 because there is a request from some chains and we witnessed some change still being on 044. So usually with security patches, we will um, backport security patches basically um, almost as far back as we can, depending on how many chains are on previous versions. So that's a guarantee that we will make, um, just like the backporting of bug, small bug fixes and various small features may not happen. Um, but, um, but for 046, we will be maintaining it. Great. And for 045, is there a 4510 release planned? Uh, 
Why do I think there was already one? There's 045.11 uh, that was released oh. seven days ago. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. So just to confirm uh, the three features you mentioned, that was, um, what is that? Uh, sorry, to which part? Uh, at some point, you mentioned like a three features, yes? Like, I think that's confirming the audit. Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Um, when you were providing the summary, you said uh, three, feature, three features. I think that was confirming the audit. What are those three features? I guess it's like oh, um, 1.1. Yeah, so, so the various features that landed in, oh, that will be landing in Twilight, um, the biggest ones are the new consensus module that handles uh, consensus params from Tendermint, um, ABCI uh, 1.0 integration, and the app side mempool. Um, and uh, then we have some uh, changes that were introduced for interchain security, but they are like minor changes. Um, there's a bunch of bug fixing, some uh, like a governance fix that helps Cosmosm. Um, and then the other biggest thing is a migration from GoGo slash Proto to Cosmo slash GoGo Proto. So as part of 047, you'll be able to get rid of the replace tag in your Go mod. The downside here is we'll just have to regenerate your Proto files but they are backwards compatible. Um, so there's no reason to worry about that. Is that. Did that answer your question, Robert? Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Um, perfect. Any other questions there? So I um, wanted to, as part of the team update, um, I think it makes sense to also do a quick IVL um, refactor update. So uh, to answer your question, uh, Roy, basically uh, what we're doing is a uh, key refactor of IVL. So uh, if you've looked into IVL, you would probably have seen that the how we store nodes in the tree are a, uh, a hash of the key. And so this does not take advantage of that locality and it makes it slower to you do gits on archive nodes. And so the osmosis team proposed one version, which is um, right version and right path as potential of a key. Um, John did some, John from the region, uh, region SDK team did some experimentation and he found that a global nonce and then after there's an, there's an ADR being that is written, um, there was an agreement to move towards right version and local nonce, meaning that like, the nonce will be localized to that version. Um, so I uh, just caught up with John earlier today. He said the implementation is completed. Um, he's doing benchmarking in order to uh, benchmarking in order to get better to see the results. And then he'll be opening that PR and we'll be ready for review. And I do, uh, he believes next week he'll be able to start on migrations from the existing DB structure um, and figuring out that story. Um, no, I don't think that answers entirely your question. Your question was um, also related to indexing the IBL. Yeah, that's um, that's the use case that we're looking at. But right now, I'm yeah, we're kind of trying to figure out what high level changes might be in the pipeline and what impact that it have on the work that we're trying to do, which is mainly like tracking the state and then indexing in the second stage. Yeah. So, so here, um, the the key migration is like the biggest thing. Um, there is there is some proposal of uh, getting rid of the orphan system. Um, I think uh, there it, it's part of the ADR. I can also share the ADR so you can catch up. It's pretty has a uh, very good engagement. Um, so it has good engagement, but it's also hard to catch up on. Um, so I'm just going to post it in the chat here. Um, and it's on the key format, uh, with, so orphan system, then potentially after that. So the goal here is that we don't break, um, in, uh, we don't break uh, merkleization. Uh, so hashes should stay the same in the ideal scenario. We still have to do testing on this. Um, then uh, past that, there's uh, nothing else that should like change on how the tree is constructed. 
the Osmosis team um, and the Notional team are working on changing how we do batch writes. So um, the LSM tree, after talking to Dave, we kind of like figured out, uh, Dave figured out that the LSM tree is not meant for multi megabyte, multi gigabyte writes. And so um, after doing some research, um, they, uh, Roman proposed a change in which we would have many um, smaller batches instead of one larger one. And let me post that issue here for everyone to catch up and also in the... Um, but this shouldn't affect the... Um, this shouldn't affect uh, your indexing. Yeah, I'll look over these things. Amazing. Um, do you have any other questions related to IVL? Or does anyone? For me, not at the moment, I think. Oh, quick, uh, uh, there's also quick. maybe I can add like, uh, um, uh, like this is a big optimization for the rollback. Um, like especially for a big data sets, rollback is expensive. Um, and surprisingly, it's not linear. And um, yeah, I'll do basically fix that. I mean, it's still to be much, I guess. Yeah, the, 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 the key format change should also help in rollback scenarios. Um, that was like one of the um, requested, uh, that was one of the uh, things that Dave had in mind when he was uh, proposing the key format change. Okay. Uh, quick question, this is all scheduled to land post Twilight? Yes, yes. Okay, thanks. Twilight is kind of like, um, like feature freeze. Um, basically, we're not introducing any new features unless they are bug fixes. Um, no, no, no refactors, anything like that. Um, we did pull uh, liquid staking from Twilight, and we will introduce liquid staking as its own Go mod instead of introducing into 047 and forcing the ecosystem to migrate to a new staking module. Um, so it will be optional for everyone to migrate to the liquid staking module. Uh, by the way, I think it's like this, you know, rollback optimization and the batch, right? Those are com compatible, right? So it could be merged into the Twilight or even 46. Yeah, but potentially later on, um, like in um, yeah, 046 and 047, I agree. Mm -hmm. Here's it. Um, so, uh, da -da -da. let me just double check if Bez, Bez is here. Um, awesome. So, um, uh, so Anka and the Hermes team uh, have been running into issues. Uh, so just before uh, I close and move on to the next subject, just wanted to make sure that there are no more questions about team updates, Twilight, and IVL. Um, so the so there's an issue regarding gRPC simulate in the sense that or simulation of a transaction in that when recheck TX is being called the um, oh I see I see what you're doing there Robert uh, thank you um, that uh, when recheck being is being called but you're doing a gRPC you or uh, and you're doing like a simulation of a transaction at the same time recheck TX could potentially like be mutating state in terms of what's in the what's in the mempool and so the simulate will actually could potentially return a uh, could return like a false positive or a false negative and so the proposal from the hermes from informal was basically um, could we uh, lock the simulate um, during recheck tx the the other part of this is it does require a change on tendermint to notify us when recheck is over um, so, Bez, that might yeah. give you some more context. 
Yeah, the uh, the problem makes sense. I'm just uh, not sure how we would actually incorporate that. You know, it's like when the query executes, it has to be aware that a recheck is currently in, not only a recheck is currently in process, but is a recheck uh, occurring for that particular transaction. Um, so I don't know how, yeah. For, for that particular, like, um state um you mean when you say transaction i mean the actual transaction bytes like when recheck is called mm -hmm. how does the simulate query know that recheck is being called and and specifically how does it know it's being called with that particular transaction that the simulation is trying to execute or i guess it's executing against an account right so it needs to know is there a recheck currently happening for for the sender for the sending account not the transaction so i guess so, we can so look I, at the application state so, so i guess here the I, I think part of the proposal was that um we because the recheck checks doesn't happen like randomly it, ha it happens like all at once and then it stops um, yeah. and then we then we get normal check TXs. so the assumption um that is being proposed uh, or the the proposal is basically like during that um, maybe there's a new flag added to check TX where like a Boolean that says like true if it's in recheck mode. And then basically we, we just lock the simulate. We already, we already have that. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so how, does saying, how, how does simulate know when we execute the query? I guess we would have to like introduce a way to, to get it. You see what I mean? Yeah, they would have to be aware of each other, basically. The query has to know. Um, the query has to know that recheck is currently being executed. I mean, we could add some like lock mechanism to to base app saying, under this particular condition, don't let the two things happen simultaneously, right? And not even worry about the sender. Just like never let it happen. You know, that would be like the most straightforward approach. Um, oh, sorry. The the, the proposed the proposal is to um, uh, the the SDK knows if it's a recheck, but it doesn't know if it's the last recheck. If that makes sense. I don't know what that uh, means. So, so it's like we have like ten rechecks, but like on the last recheck when we're supposed to like unlock the simulate, um, we don't know if this is the last one in the current design. I think Adi's also raising his hand, and he was on the call with us. There's no locking, so I don't. What is? What is yeah, we would mean? introduce the locking. We would introduce no. like you can't simulate during the recheck phase. Why? Because of this problem that we're just describing. Okay, I don't understand it. Because if you simulate a transact, if you simulate a transaction, it could be that recheck bumps it bumps its nonce. Um, and um, the simulation assumes that the wrong sequence number is in state. Can the recheck bump a nonce? I mean, it happen like in a different context? I have to check. Um, I have to check. I'm not, I don't remember. We do have rechecks, yeah, so, recheck guards. Yeah, yeah so right. the way you describe it, I think it's accurate, uh, uh, Alex. Uh, we are looking on a way to get informed that when we do simulate, the simulation is against an old mempool state. It's not against the mempool state that is after uh, the recheck has be, has finished. So after you commit a block, we wanted to simulate on the state of the mempool uh, after recheck is finished. Uh, if we do it against the state of mempool that is still pending, that is kind of doing recheck, then it's problematic. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't care if it's before or after. No, we want after actually. So we we would like to have something like give us either block us, either block the request, or give a flag back in the response to the TX simulate request saying, uh, this is the result of your TX simulate, but watch out, it was run against a mempool that had say polluted state or something like that. Oh, old, old state, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or block us, but I, I guess blocking blocking the call is probably a bad pattern. Uh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, reject should be shouldn't be like uh, you know um, like stateless. No, recheck is not stateless. Mm. Uh, for example, I'm looking at the increment sequence decorator, and there is no recheck. There is no recheck check. So it always bumps the sequence, even on recheck. Mm. Now, what if we just added a recheck check to the sequence bump decorator? So that we know, I mean, mm, yeah, we need to see, I don't know. I'm thinking out loud here, maybe that's wrong. Uh, maybe there might be a reason why we don't do that. Um, yeah, but there's some like weird case that, you know, this basically happens yeah. in that particular case on, and like, I mean, bumping the nonce and like move yeah. that uh, flow to like, yeah. I don't know, a new, new, um, what to say, yeah, a new flow. <laughs> Outside yeah. of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. What if, what if, uh, hold on. What if we simply ignore nonce mismatch or, um, sorry, the signature verification fails, right? So we can say under simulate, um, Wait, but during simulation, we don't even, it's a fake signature to begin with. So why is there a nonce in this match? Hello? Mm, I don't know. How, how did you see uh, on simulate, you're getting nonce mismatches as well? Yes, we get a sequence number mismatch in there as well. There's actually there's actually a check that if you're not in simulation mode and you're not in recheck, only then do we actually verify the signature. So it seems like there's so somehow I don't, it's checking. So what you're saying doesn't really add up. Okay. Yeah. I maybe maybe there's. Maybe there's a bug in the on our side, but yeah, we should double check. Can, can you uh, can you just I'll post the, the sentence? Code. Okay, or, or yeah. if you post the code, that would also be great because my my knowledge of SD is very limited, so I am I, I need to look at it. Uh, yeah, I'll post the code in just one second. So it's the nice. sentence is that signature check is only when not in simulate and not in the recheck. Correct. So right here, I'll post it in the uh, in the chat. But doesn't that mean that if there is at least one of these conditions true, then there is a check of signature and account? Yes. Yeah, okay, so then wouldn't that also mean that it's normal for us to encounter the situation where we're doing a, a simulation on an old mempool state and uh, we're given an answer being told that you're using an old sequence number and you should be using the, uh, no, you're using two new of a sequence number because the mempool is not aware that some transaction was already evicted from the mempool. So the use case is like this. You send a transaction in the mempool and it's sequence number one. And then you send another transaction in the mempool and it's sequence number two. Uh, then sequence number one gets included in, in it gets committed. Um, then you do a recheck. And now we send another transaction in the mempool and it's sequence number three. Um, wait, I think I messed it up. Can I have a quick? Quick question from my side. Like, um, right now we're kind of simulating against this like check state. Um, mm -hmm. And that check state is kind of like what is in that tenement mempool. But like post 047, 
can we actually simulate just against like what's in our what's in the app side mempool? Like you find this signature, you find this address in the mempool. If this address has like a nonce, at least for nonce cases, like if this nonce has if this address has a nonce of five, and you're trying to simulate a transaction that has nonce five with this address, then you should get a mismatch, and it should just tell you like, hey, I have I have transactions for this address with these nonces. Does that make sense? I I don't know. I mean, I think we can just add a simulation check to the sequence checking, and it might just solve all the problems. Okay, simulation so, check to the so like yeah in the sig verification decorator you would say like if 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 not simulate then do the sequence check and that way you never even bother comparing the nonces. you would exactly still get the what? sequence you would still get the sequence number to incur the same amount of gas right so we have to be careful so we'd have to put that in a variable but then we would have an if we would have an if statement saying if not simulate, then do the sequence check. That would and work then, for, our, for our case. And I would yeah. do that to kind of run it through uh, through some experiments okay. and see how it, how it plays in practice. Let me open up a PR for you then, and then I'll send it to you, and then you can experiment against that PR. Okay. I think there's already an open issue. Marco, you probably know it better than the, the specific yeah. issue. Though yeah. I can also... But Bez has been going back and forth. Yeah. Um, oh, I thanks. know. Thanks. With Ankara there. Yeah, I'll post it there. Um, okay, let's move on if there's other items in the agenda. Awesome, thank you guys. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next item is um, introduce a way to execute logic during the commit phase. I'm not sure if anyone from DYDX is here, but um, uh, Bez, you brought this up yeah, in Slack. This is, um, this is a good maybe one. you want to talk about it? Yeah, so. For those that are like have built apps in the SDK, um, you should know that like your application can define custom begin block and block logic, right? That's typically where you do things like validator set updates, reward distributions, slashing, things like that. Um, and you know the, each module in your application defines either no op or you know something to actually execute in begin block or end block. DYDX is proposing that they extend this idea to also include commit. So each module can also define its own logic or do a no op um, during commit. And that's um, essentially the gist of it. I don't know their exact use case and why they want to do this, but this is their proposal. Um, you know, we in theory could support something like this, and most apps would just do nothing. Um, yeah. But it is additional API surface area that we would have to maintain, and I wanted to see what other app developers think about something like this. How is this different than end block? It is. It's what actually happens on ABCI commit. Uh, so right, after but... after end block, why they but... did, why they can't do it in end block? I don't know. I wish someone from their team was on this call. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm aware that you know commit is after the end block, but. The whole thing is that, you know, like the end block is the technically like last time when the logic happens and the commit is basically like, you know, wrapping all this, you know, stack of contexts up and, you know, like putting it on a database. Yeah, yeah. Ending to the, to, to, to the tender mint. I, like, you I know, mm -hmm. like there is no, it's only like a synchronization between the state and the tender mint between the end block and the commit. So I'm just, I hear you. I, and I, I agree. I, I don't know why they want to do this um, or if it's even safe, but maybe we just punt this until someone from the, from their team is on the call. I'm right now, but yeah, that is my bad for not inviting them. Um, okay, so I mean, um, also wanted to, yeah, also wanted to hear kind of what Bez mentioned from other application developers. Do you, do you guys? Can you guys foresee a use case for having access to this?
So I, I think like one thing in the future and I'm thinking about it, like if we introduce like finalized block, oh, yeah. then, yeah. then like that. the commit would become like the end block, unless we recreate begin block and end block, um, like before finalized block and after finalized block. Um, well, after doesn't execution finalize, of transactions. Doesn't finalized block essentially encapsulate end block and commit and deliver TX all in one thing? Yeah, so, so we, we would have to like, recreate it like mocking it so it's like when you call finalize block before you execute the transactions um do this and then after you execute the transactions to do that um mm -hmm. the the only thing like we can expose the commit phase um but the problem here is uh, unless we ourselves are emitting the events like they won't and if there are any events emitted in commit like they won't be sent back to tendermint Mm -hmm. in the current design. Uh, Alex, I see you have a raised hand. Yeah, hello. Um, I, I don't have a use case. I am also very curious about this use case, but I see a lot of risks. So um, begin block and block, both are not really um, safe against um, panics. Yeah, and um, so what would happen on, on a transaction commit um, callback? So where, where's the scope? Where's um, panic handled at this case? I, I don't think we can do it. So it's a similar to begin end block. And um, so it's it's risky. So if not done right. And um, so the question is, would this, this change be helpful for, for use case or would it just um, yeah make the, the whole system more vulnerable? That, that, that's my concern. So, and there are also questions about gas, for example. So what whatever runs there is not tied to the fee system. And um, I, I don't know, I was, was wondering if it could be something like invariance checks and, and whatever that they want to run there. But yeah, doesn't also make, does not make sense for me. Don't know, I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, I'll, I think them. So once I get an answer, then I will be able to better um, but talk about it. I also may just write up their use case or ask them to write a issue on that so mm -hmm. we can all kind of see the use case. Yeah, you're right. Like, you know, like in general, begin and book is dangerous. Yes, like already accessing the state can panic, right? And if, if the panic or like whatever, I mean, there is like many code which can just magically panic. And if that happens in the beginning and block, then it blows up the whole node. Yep. yep. And what's even worse is that you know, like, if I remember correctly, yes, there could be some synchronization problem between all this um, uh, multi tree setup. You said potential uh, centralization? No, problems in the multi tree setup. Okay. Another question would be like to call the um, um, transaction callback on on success, on failure, on both cases, and uh, would the transaction status be part of the callback or not? I mean, there's a lot you you can can build. Yeah, add quite some complexity there. And normally, I mean, you have your handler. You you um, you can wrap it easily. You can, I don't know. So there are possibilities to for for a lot of use cases so yeah i guess yeah. We, we need more more info we need more context, we need more context. Yeah. um awesome uh robert you want to take it away with uh the next item uh, yeah sure so for a reminder okay i don't have a link right now i can find it um so for a reminder yes we um uh, we have like this old since uh, the summer this year, oh, no, even older, an issue about like having this expenditure mode to cancel um, a proposal. Uh, basically, the use case is that uh, when we find out, and it happened, I think, to um, the hub, that there is a bug in um, in the proposal, or for example, um, like the proposal includes a link with binaries and something is wrong there. Yeah, so to be able to cancel it, and basically the agreement we have is that um, the 
proposer can cancel it, and there is an inherent cost of that uh, defined as a parameter. All right, so, um, and um, yeah, we want that, you know, proposer, I mean, depending on the on the value of the parameter, right, but proportion of, of, of uh, deposit, yes, will um, not be returned. So, like, there are three options. Yeah, so um, uh, community fund, burning, and um, returning. Right, so we want that uh, proposer won't get everything. But should we now, like, which two of them we should consider, right? The burning and uh, community fund, burning and returning, or community fund and returning? So I think here, like as you were explaining it, um, it, what if we have like, so the community pool is technically a um, module account, like the burning address um, potentially is like a burning account and burning module account and the, uh, and then the proposer. And so it could be that like, if the param is set to empty, like that signifies that it should go back to the proposer if it's sent to the burning module address or the community model module address then it's sent there and that way okay, that could be interesting chain. idea so basically the we chain add has an the address. right to choose yeah yeah we add an address where this thing is sent if it's empty then it's burning otherwise it will send to that address Uh, okay. I mean, that's like the way to get to solve like all three possible <laughs> combinations or all three possible solutions. Right. I mean, because we don't want, I guess, like having three of them right at the same time, like burning and community pool and sending back to the proposer. For yeah, the moment, think, like at some point, I was then, thinking that we both, I mean, we only burn and send to the community pool, pool community pool, so nothing goes to the proposer. But that was also like not clear. Yeah, at, at least here it's like if you want to like. Um, oh. So the burning it, address, I think we shouldn't have like a burning address. Basically, if it's not set, then it's then it's uh, burning. If it's if it's unset, is um, it sends to that. If it's a set address, then so if it's it sends unset, it to... so we have like a destination address, right? Yeah. So the destination address, if it's empty, then we're burning. Otherwise, it would be the destination address, yes? So by default, let's say community pool. How about that? If empty, it's burned. Uh, if not, then... To that address, uh, by default, community to, pool. I guess here in this scenario, so it's like if you treat empty as burned, um, then it's, um, uh if empty it's burned um then there's no way to like say send back to proposer oh so i was thinking that maybe we always send back to the proposer so we have like two params right so the already one param which is implemented is like the ratio right. what, and what if we do something like you just do like a straight statement and it's like if um we do like a like if burn like the the word burn, then it gets sent to like the burn address. Then it calls like burn on the account. Um, but if it's a if it's not burn, then it's a an address and it gets sent there. And if it's empty, then it gets sent back to the proposer. So no, we don't need that because we already have a parameter a ratio. And the ratio will say, for example, 80% sent to the, let's say, burning of community pool and 20% uh, okay. to, the, to the proposal. Okay, okay, I see. I see, I see what yeah. you mean now. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. If empty, it's burned. If not, then to address. Yeah. I, yeah. So like, basically, if you want everything sent back to the proposer, you set the ratio to 100, yeah, or yeah. to zero. Yes, exactly. 
I, I know Julian and Amory were also working on this. Would love to hear their thoughts on this. Yeah, I think that's fine for me. So is it the expectation that uh, Sai will work on this? Continue the yeah, I was talking with him about it, about it. With, I, I was talking ab, uh, with him about it, about this thing yesterday. So that's why I'm like, bringing it back. Cool. Thanks. I see. Sweet. Um, is there anything else you'd like to cover from that, Robert? No, I mean, I can ask him, yes, like, uh, what's the, so that would be alpha, you are planning 47 alpha, right? So we can still technically, if that will be, let's say, done by Monday, we could still put it into the 47, right? I, I'd, I'd prefer to kind of have feature freeze right now, um, but, uh, the, the next major release um, won't be like soon, won't be far out. So we're trying to like increase our release cadence. Um, and right now, like I'd like to say 047 is like feature frozen. Um, so we can like audit without a moving target. Okay, then you should call it beta and then rather than alpha. Okay, that works. Thanks for that. Um, perfect. So that, that gets us to the agenda. Um, uh, is there anything that anyone would like to discuss? Any questions, any design considerations? Um, you can even ask something about your own application um, or just something general to the SDK um, before we end. There's one, if I have one thing, a quick thing, if no one has anything else. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, raise his hand, but we ahead. can quickly go with that. Uh, you can go first. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. So, uh, my question is: uh, uh, Is there anybody interested in uh, account abstraction? I mean, we could abstract uh, account authentication logic and uh, sequence check logic from the current uh, auth module so that we can have more flexible um, account um, uh, user you, you, uh, account uh, um, more, more flexible for example uh, smart contract uh, account or something like that isn't this already okay like smart contract has it on other side right? Both in Cosmosm and EVM. Mm, yeah, but uh, I mean that uh, currently, uh, we uh, for for account we are always checking, we are always verifying the signature. Uh, so maybe we can abstract this from the current account mod model. Uh, when we create an account. We can set up any authentication logic uh, so that uh, we can uh, check any logic instead of checking the sig sig signature. Um, yes, yeah. I think I this is a good idea. And I think, like, some, for example, Aaron has put, done some workout pointer for an issue um, that I pasted here where, yeah, we, we remove this account extraction and then we have this notion of credential where, for example, a pop key could be a credential, but pop key can verify signature. But like say a module account or a group account or a Cosmosm contract, they they also have their credential, but their credential does something else. It doesn't verify signatures. It's uh, yeah, it, it, like it does some custom logic. So uh, yeah, take a look at this issue and maybe if like, that resonates with you, we can continue there. Um, but overall, I think yeah, that's a it's a good idea. I just, yeah, just yeah. to add to that, the um, the Cosmosm contracts they don't send with a sender, right? So they they don't have uh, keys stored and they don't go through the full um, yeah SDK stack to to ex to send messages. So we are not hitting the anti handlers, for example. So we go to the routers directly. Just some context. 
Yes, yeah, exactly. And that, that would be hand, like, but Cosm wasn't contract, they still have an address and the account number in Stain, right? Yes, yes, of, of course. Um, that's that's needed for the SDK. Um, but um, yeah, as I said, we, we're hitting the router, we're not hitting the uh, the anti hand plus. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, could you please post uh, the issue so that I can take yes. a look? It's in the oh, chat. Uh, take a look at the latest message, 13211. It's also in, the in, in Discord as well. Okay. Okay. We just sent it to three different places. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, uh, Adu. Um, uh, Bez, you wanted to say something as well? Yeah, I wanted to quickly bring up um, the idea of uh, uh, voting periods um, uh, per, so the, in osmosis, there's variable voting periods per proposal type in the legacy governance system. Uh, I propose that we would do something similar in the new governance me me uh, mechanism that's message-based where you know uh, you could define uh, each message type has a configurable uh, voting period um, and my question slash proposal is what do people think about the case where you have multiple messages in the proposal to so just take the maximum of the voting periods of the messages um, that's essentially it I, I'd be fine with like the maximum um, because then that also incentivizes people to like break up the proposal into multiple to try and get the smaller things faster or the other messages through faster. Um, mm -hmm. But that's just like thinking off the top of my head. Does um, anyone have any other thoughts? So basically, this is the idea is that we have let's say like one default voting period but some other messages can have let's say smaller voting period and if the governance proposal only covers the small voting for smaller messages yes they will have like extended extended mode yeah if no if no um message type has a explicit custom voting period you you assume and fall back to the the default or uh general one as we as we have now in general, like already the improvement to have like multiple messages, because I think now we can only like one proposal is only one message. So like even uh, like the simple thing. I think you can have multiple, multiple. You can have multiple messages in a proposal, right? Unless I'm mistaken. Let me quickly that. Right, Amory. Yeah, you can have multiple messages. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's an array. It's an array of messages. Are you, are you talking about the old system? No, no, Robert? the new one. The new one. Uh, I'm talking about the new one. I think we're going to be talking about the old this, one. This whole conversation is in context of the new system. Yeah. Just FYI. Yeah. Is is anyone against this or yeah. um, has some thoughts? No one's against it. I'll 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 do it, <laughs> and uh, people are are free to fork the gut module. I was actually yeah. against it. I like you know I, my so my idea was that um, voting period shouldn't be always only depending on message type. Um, but say you have a yeah. proposal. If it's a small one, then it could be like one week. But if it's a big one, then it could it should be like two weeks or more. I mean, you base this off the polka dot approach right or like even like you know that's the inspiration but in general um like you know message type might not be like the good granularity and it's also also based on um the group module where we have this decision policy interface which has a lot of more granularity so i'm kind of mm -hmm. thinking you know in more alignment of govern group which started in 046 a little bit but like if you know if we should push that direction also so like Polkadot has, has it even more complex. They have like 
this different like even like a whole process right so like the different levels and then like the top levels like it requires like a lot big bonds long voting period different quorum and all of the things right um so like really like depending what do you want to change it can be a completely different parameter yeah polka dots is too complex for us and it's not like doesn't you know fits our use case it's just um yeah like maybe my 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 overall higher point is uh like you know, should we resume this alignment between gov and group, mm -hmm. and make and make you know gov more similar to this decision policy we have in group? I was also like thinking about you know this. Uh, there was recently a um like a quick chat about it on Discord. So like having the, um, I mean one thing I was proposing like basically being able to authorize gov, uh, sorry gov authorizing a group. Um, right. So like. Let's say there is a parent change in a some custom module, right? And the parent change may like say, I don't know, what's the limit of some token transfers, right? Um, then, uh, then the golf. I mean, you could probably you should be able, like, you know, the golf authorizing, like, golf making the authorization for the um, for the group of like a very specific message. Um, and maybe like even specific authorization, so not like a general authorization, it could be like an authorization with more parameters, right? Like same as we have with like a, you know, a, um, a general authorization and we have like specific authorization in the bank module. Uh, so I was thinking that this works right now, but I think it doesn't work right now. No. Like the bank cannot make an authorization like currently, it, I mean, technically, like bank can execute. No, no, there's no even like a message for that. So we, we cannot make bank, so not bank, so the golf authorizing a group module, uh, sorry, a, a group or in general, an address. Well, I mean, I don't want to diverge too much from the original question topic. Um, if there isn't, I'm not saying we can't explore other ideas. Uh, but if there isn't strong opposition to what I propose, then I would be happy to implement it. Do you want to write an issue? And then maybe yeah. um, maybe I'll we just quickly issue. move the discussion there, and then Amory and Robert can uh, comment there. Um, okay. Jim, it'd just be, uh, I know it's uh, the top of the hour, so if people want to head up, but I know Jim raised his hand, so just want to make sure that his question is also answered. Uh, yeah, just wondered if anyone was here from the Gaia team and could give a quick update on Gaia Row. I am about right. to go to the Gaia stand up, so I could give you an update after that. Um, so okay. I can I can message you on Discord, but uh, I don't know if anyone from here is from the hub team. Is anyone? Sounds like not. Uh, yeah, a quick update would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Awesome. Then thank you everyone for joining and uh, enjoy your weekend. And hopefully you're in a sunnier place than I am in Berlin. We're getting, it's getting dark at around 3.30. Um, so enjoy the sun. <laughs> ciao, ciao, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.